My name is Scott Moody. I'm the general manager of Stockton East Water District. I've been with the district uh, almost six and a half years. After I retired out of the United States Navy, I, I came to uh, Twain Hart, and that was really kind of my first experience with nature in the mountains in California. Once you live in it for a while, you start to understand the importance of preserving what we have up here. The Calaveras River is a beautiful place. It feeds drinking water. It feeds ag supply water. It creates habitat for steelhead and other species. It also provides uh, flood control for uh, winter months so that the city of Stockton doesn't flood. My name is Patrick Cuthbert. I'm a fisheries biologist with Fish Bio. I've been working on the Calaveras River for about nine years now. Historically, the Calaveras River used to be a really flashy and dynamic river. During dry seasons, there were portions of the river that would completely dry up. After rainfall events or significant storms, it could swell to high flows and would potentially flood the city of Stockton downstream. And so what the Army Corps did was they built the new Hogan Dam and they do controlled releases in timing with other rivers so that we don't have any flooding in the city of Stockton. With the Calaveras River being such a dynamic system, the dam has helped the fishery by capturing rainwater, storing it, and using it to provide a more consistent year-round flow. From New Hogan Dam, the Calaveras River heads downstream through a canyon reach, proceeds downstream down to the Belota Weir. At Belota, the river then splits into two separate channels, the Old Calaveras River and Mormon Slough. They proceed downstream until they then again meet at the Stockton Diverting Canal, and then the Stockton Diverting Canal then discharges to the San Joaquin River where it proceeds to the Delta. Even given the complex nature of the Calaveras River, it's still capable of supporting and promoting a uh, healthy population of rainbow trout and steelhead. It's for this reason that the National Marine Fisheries Service and the Stockton East Water District have come together to develop the Habitat Conservation Plan, or the HCP, for the Calaveras River. Above Belota, which is our headworks where the Old Calaveras and the Mormon Slough separate, we consider that to be the primary fishery on the Calaveras River, and so we want to protect that um, because that is their habitat in times when they're not transiting to and from the Delta. The Calaveras River Habitat Conservation Plan is a 50-year agreement to conserve and promote the fishery while providing greater water security for the district and its users. And so what the HDP does really is it kind of defines our activities when we're taking, putting in weirs, when we're taking out weirs. It tells us how to do it so that we're not stranding fish between one weir and another, and we don't unnecessarily take fish. The HCP is, is designed to protect both rainbow trout and steelhead. Steelhead is our primary concern. They're federally protected species. We want to provide them as much protection as we possibly can. They're uh, genetically the same species as rainbow trout. They exhibit two different life histories. Resident rainbow trout are just that. They're resident and reside in the river year round. Steelhead are what we call anadromous fish. So those that spawn in fresh water and then go back out to the ocean environment. Rainbow trout are important because they provide a source population for steelhead. They're important as like a recreational fish. When you think about recreational fishing, it's part of that cultural heritage passed down from generation to generation. The safest route for fish migration would be Mormon Slough. We don't want fish going into the old Calaveras. They need to be in the Mormon Slough where there's a much better um, chance of them surviving coming up or down uh, the, the river itself. The conservation strategies that are included in the Habitat Conservation Plan are uh, to improve barriers to fish passage, screen diversions in the river to reduce fish entrainment, maintain flow in certain sections of the river for fish, and maintain water quality and monitor the health of fish populations. The HCP works to address barriers to fish passage in two ways. One is to remove the flashboard dams in a sequential manner, moving downstream. Uh, the other would be to fix some of the impediments that have been documented in the Calaveras River. The flashboard dams really throughout our system are to pool the water so that the agricultural customers can pump that water for agricultural purposes. 
when we're pulling those flashboard dams, we want to start at the top of the headworks and work our way down the river and allow the fish to follow the river downstream to make sure that we didn't strand any fish. The district is also committed to improving five of the in-stream crossings or structures that are in the Calaveras River that are known to be fish impediments. The district has actually completed two of those five projects. And we go in and we redesign the fish passage so that it's much simpler for fish to be able to transit up and downstream. The district is also committed to working with private diverters uh, to screen some of, their, some of their diversion facilities that they have. The screening of these diversions will help to reduce entrainment of fish as they migrate downstream. The Belota Headworks is where the Old Calaveras and the Mormon Slough separate. And at that facility, we have a diversion for the drinking water plant there for the city of Stockton, where we provide wholesale water. The fish screen that we put in was a, a temporary fish screen several years ago. And so as part of the HCP, the district has agreed with NIMPS, the National Marine Fisheries, to come to a design that, that would replace that entire infrastructure on both the Old Calaveras and the Mormon Slough, as well as our diversion for the drinking water plant, and design that in such a way where we don't strand fish, we don't entrain fish, we want them to stay above Belota, except in times where they want to transit to the, uh, to the San Joaquin River or the Delta via the Mormon Slough. We want to, at a bare minimum, make sure that above Belota, 100% of all diversions are screened. As part of our permitting process moving forward at the district, we are going to require any new permit have the latest technology used in a fish stream. To provide adequate habitat conditions, the district is committed to providing a minimum flow rate of 25 cubic feet per second below New Hogan Dam. Any time during the year, we never want to get below 25 CFS. We want to have enough water in the river to make sure the fish can get up or down the river and to make sure that the fish have the best chance they can to survive. During the development of the HCP, uh, the, the district has been strongly committed to monitoring the fish population downstream. Over this period, we've learned that the rainbow trout and steelhead fishery in the Calaveras River is comparable to nearby streams, if not surpassing those. The district has invested in, in screw traps to count fish. We've been jet invested in temporary uh, fish ladders with uh, the capability of, of snapping pictures of fish that run through the ladder. We have worked closely with Fish Bio to make sure that you know we're, we're operating the river in such a way that we're doing what we can and still satisfying our municipal and agricultural responsibilities with the forethought that ecologically we want to be friends of the river as well. My hope for the future with the ACP is that over the 50 years that we have this agreement, we operate in a way that we're, we're sustaining and even promoting this fishery so that future generations will have this recreational fishery to come back to. At the same time, that we conserve our water resources and make sure that it's available to everyone that needs it. Water is vital. You can't live without water. It doesn't matter if you're in agriculture, it doesn't matter if it's for the fish, it doesn't matter if it's for drinking water. It, it's one of the necessities of life that we've got to have. And so it's important that all of the entities communicate with each other and that we're constantly understanding issues that we're seeing on the river that if we're communicating, perhaps we can find together the best way to solve it. And understanding nature and, and how important it is to the people who live here and just how we coexist without destroying nature.